In this video, you can win a thousand kroners in charging from Elton. More on that later. Hey guys, Chris here, and welcome to the brand new Audi Q6 e-tron. This is a huge deal and a huge new car from Audi. This represents the first of the next generation electric cars from Audi. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the exterior, we're gonna take a look at a lot of the new tech, and then we're gonna take a look at the interior, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you guys if I think you should buy this car or maybe wait for something else. And also, we're actually gonna to get to test drive this very shortly on a test track out here. Elton is a one and all charging app that can charge across different charge point operators in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. One payment method, one charging interface, and one map interface makes charging super simple and easy. And Elton are actually giving away a thousand kroners in charging. So to participate, go to the link under this video and register your phone number to win a thousand kroners in charging from Elton. Okay, so this is a brand new platform. This is called PPE platform premium electric and this is a brand new 800 volt based electric architecture from Audi that is also shared with the new Macan EV and as you guys can see this has very different proportions compared to any other Audi and that is intentional what they try to do with the front end here is extend the length from the A pillar to the front of the car giving it a very powerful demeanor, a really nice just stance on the road, and I think it looks really, really nice. I'm a huge fan of the proportions, and in my opinion, I think this is now the best looking SUV from Audi. It looks better than the Q4 e-tron, it looks better than the Q8 e-tron, I think it looks better than the Q7, and even the old Q8 internal combustion engine version. It just has really nice proportions, and as you guys can see here, it has these shoulders here, these lines that, you know, bulge out a little bit, giving it a lot of stance and presence. And it's also, if we move a little bit back here, you can see that it even extends more here. This shoulder line here is taken directly from the Audi e-tron GT. And for you guys who have been following the channel for a while now, know that I love the Audi e-tron GT. It is one of my favorite designs in any electric car. And I actually owned one of them a few years ago. So looking at these lines here, very reminiscent of the Audi e-tron GT. And if we get to rotate the car a little bit here, we can take a look at the rear end. And what's really cool that you have this line here that flows into the rear lights, which is also very much Audi e-tron GT. We don't have access to all of the settings now from the exterior of the car, but this has three separate OLED sections here now that have 60 sections of OLED that can change. So you have 380 different parts here that can change. You can come closer. You can see that there's actually a little bit of animation here, but there are a lot of cool. So I'm going to see if I can overlay some cool B-roll here to show you guys. We don't have a lot of animation now. We can show you that from the interior later on, but it is really, really cool. It lets you customize eight different profiles on the rear lights and on the front lights. But I really do like, you know, this light bar. And again, if you should just rotate the car a little bit, You can really see, you know, those strong shoulder lines across the line of the car. I think it has really nice and boxy and beautiful proportions. I really do think this is the best looking design out of Audi since the original e-tron GT back in 2021. And taking a look at the front end here, I think we're going to stop the car right about here. You can see that it also has those OLED sections in the front lights, but in the front lights, there are only 122 different lit up and customizable OLED sections compared to 360 in the rear. But on top here, we have the DRL. And again here, like the rear, there are eight different profiles, eight different designs, and it does look really, really cool. So you have the DRLs on top and then down low here, if you come a little bit closer, this is actually what they call the, the black mask. 
And this is actually darked out this area when the lights are off, and it's almost like the headlights are hidden. Here we have our, our, our low beams and then our high beams. So this is now completely separated as before this and this was one section. But to be able to make this you know, unique and more customizable, they've had to separate it. And I think it is a really, really nice decision. I really do like the front end of this car. You have the black surrounding here now with the Audi single frame grille and this is an evolution of what we saw back in the mid 2000s where Audi have now implemented their grille design now into the EV architecture. We first saw this grille design here with the Audi e-tron GT and then we saw it with the Audi Q4 e-tron. We also saw a variation of this in a facelifted version of the original e-tron which is now called the Q8 e-tron and then we see the latest version here. So at launch, this is now available in two different versions. We have the Q6 e-tron Quattro and also the SQ6. What's interesting is that both cars have basically the same running gear, the same motors, the same battery pack, which is 100 kilowatts gross, 94.9 kilowatt hours usable, and both cars with a peak charging speed of 270 kilowatts, giving you a charging time from 10 to 80% in 21 minutes which is very impressive with this size battery. The Q6 e-tron Quattro gets the most range, 625 kilometers WLTP, where the SQ6 now gets 598 kilometers. But as I said, we asked the engineers today, we have had two days of technical and detailed presentation. And one of the questions was, do they have the same electric motors in the front and rear. And they do. It's only, you know, the software that, which is the difference with the, uh, the performance where the Q6 e-tron Quattro gets 388 horsepower, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.9 seconds, and a top speed of 210 kilometers an hour. The SQ6 is the performance version with 517 horsepower on boost mode, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.3 seconds, with a top speed of 230 kilometers an hour. And also there is a rumor, we've seen some testing, we've seen some spy photos, that there will be an RS, Q6 version in the future. I'm hoping for that because this car with more performance than the 517 horsepower would be really cool and maybe with a top speed of 250 kilometers an hour because you guys who are, well, not new to the channel know that I now have had a Taycan cross race mode for two years and I'm looking to replace it with something. Do I want an SQ6 e-tron? Do I want an RSQ6 e-tron? which would be really cool. Or maybe I want to go the Macan EV route or maybe the new updated and facelifted Taycan. Let me know in the comment section down below, guys, what you guys would like to see on the channel. We did this a few years ago. We did a poll when I had my e-tron GT and you guys, well, told me to buy a Cross Turismo instead. And that's what I did. I sold my e-tron GT and got a Cross Turismo and maybe we should do a different poll. Okay, guys, we have now stepped outside into a Q6, oh, not a Q6, an SQ6 e-tron prototype. And now they have a little, little bit of a track set up for us here. So I think we're just gonna get into it, put it into B mode maybe, or does that, not, that does work, right? And so I'm allowed to just push it as hard as I want. Are we in dynamic mode now? Think. You think we're in dynamic mode? Yeah, I'm, uh, check both the panels. So how do I do that? Just, uh, pull, uh, pull them both? So what are we looking for? Is it in, is it in uh, dynamic mode now? Are we in dynamic? Yes. Okay. So first impressions driving the SQ6. We're not allowed to take this car out on the road. This is a prototype before the actual launch, but they have a little bit of a course set up for us here now. You guys have seen me doing this on ice for a few weeks now in the new Volvo EX30 Twin Performance and also the Polestar 3 performance with the test chief engineer Joachim Riedholm. And this does feel very different to any of those cars, basically because we are on asphalt. But first impressions, this does feel very tight. I've just had an AQ4 e-tron Sportback on loan, a 45 with S-Line exterior and interior package. I think that was on some adapted dampers also. But this does feel very eager and positive to change direction, 
Steering waiting up really nicely. Okay, we're getting a little bit of speed here. Nobody's complaining in the back, nobody's complaining in the front. And then we wanna go here. Do we wanna wait for this guy or do we wanna go ahead of this guy? We can go ahead. We can go ahead, okay. Maybe we can push it a little bit more now, but steering does feel really nice. I mean, this, the rack is, 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 is relatively quick. Let's try to stay within the lines here. It feels very neutral through the corner so Let's see if we can go a little bit lean, but I mean, this is a heavy car, 2.35 tons, I think. And then this is quite tight, this right here. And then accelerate out of here. Oh, it tightens up and then it opens up a little bit. Okay, let's see if we can do this. And maybe we can do like a launch control over here. I've seen a few guys doing that as I've been out here filming a little B-roll for you guys. So I think we're in dynamic mode now. This does have, is it 517 horsepower on boost? Left foot brake. Yep. Brake and gas. And then gas and then and we're just ready to go. 4.3 seconds, zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Let's test that with a car with four adults and it does pick up speed quite nicely and it builds up really nicely. Yeah, this does feel very positive. This is the track here. I don't know, it's not important. We don't have to stay within the lines, but let's see. If we chuck it into this corner here, what it feels like. Okay, now we're really pushing it. Through the SS. Okay. Can we go one more or do we have to? We can go one more, we can go one more. So guys, this is just a first impressions. We're not gonna get to, you know, feel handle, not ride. And, and refinement like that. We're just gonna get to push it. But, this, but it is fun, it is fun. What is our state of charge? We're at 90%, so we should have plenty of power. Let's go through here and just chuck it. Okay. Okay, we are getting a little bit of slap over stair there. And then it tightens up the seat belts. But yeah, and then we have the hazards on. Maybe we should turn those off. <laughs> The car got a little bit of scared, but now it tucks the seat belts. Maybe we have to come to a complete stop. It says something in German. What did it say? It says ready. It got, it, it got a little bit too scared with us. Okay. And I am warm. It is quite mild here in Germany, in Munich, where we are now compared to where we have been in Norway. But it does feel very positive. I mean, it feels very confidence inspiring for being such a big and large car. I mean, this is a relatively large SUV. Again, we're not following the lines there. Let's see if we can get it to rotate a little bit. No, but we do have all the, can, can we turn off any assistance systems or do we have to he keep them on? We have to keep, we have to keep them, them on. Okay, so they're not gonna let us go completely, Larry. But it does feel very controlled. As I do those quick, you know, side to side motions, it does, you know, lean over quickly, but it really settles really nicely down on its suspension. So. Yeah, it is quite impressive. You guys have made a really, really capable large SUV. Welcome to the interior of the new Audi Q6 e-tron. So the car we're looking at today is a Q6 e-tron. They have a different car, which is an SQ6, but I actually prefer the exterior color of this. I also really like this interior. So this is the base interior, guys, with sports seats. This has a really nice and cool fabric, which is called melange. And it kind of, you know, gives me a little bit of an old school, nostalgic vibe, you know, bar arcing back to the, the 1980s with the Audi Quattros. This has the sports seats. So you have the S-Line embossed logo there. You also have a sports plus seat, which is basically the same th seat as you find in the Macan EV. So I've set this seat to my position. Maybe I can move it even a little bit, like a centimeter or two forward. And the seating position is really, really nice. This is a new version of the steering wheel we saw in the Audi Q4 e-tron, which now has sport, four, three spokes, or like the center spoke here instead of the four spoke design. And I actually think it is really nice. I'm not a huge fan of the, the squircle, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It also has, you know, the new style of buttons from Audi where these are touch buttons, but also physical buttons as well. But as you guys can see down here, we do have a physical volume knob. So applause Audi, that is really, really welcome. We also have this physical shifter that we first saw also in the Audi e-tron GT. So there are a lot of hard switches here, on button, off button. You have your drive select button. 
You also have, oh, that's the key. That's what the key looks like. Can we get a close-up for uh, that key? It looks a little bit cheap. Maybe this isn't the main key. Or maybe it is the main key, but it's not the worst thing. It does have a really nice and hefty feel to it. But yeah, Audis have had, you know, uh, glossy black plastic earlier. This is matte black. But okay, it is what it is. This is the cup holder. As I said there, you have a little bit of storage here. You have wireless chargers. You have USB-C ports. But this is the new deal. This is called Panorama or MMI Panorama, where you now have this wraparound screen. You have a 12 point nine inch screen in front of the driver 12.1 inch screen i think it's 12.1 and then this is 14.5 inches and then you have a passenger screen here at 10.9 inches this runs a new and updated version of audi touch mmi it runs on top of android os but it is not android automotive it is its own thing which is audi touch mmi on top of it where Audi have put, you know, their style, their functions, and with that comes, you know, good things and bad things, but, you know, we can't expand too much on the functionality. I'm missing a few things like, you know, navigation with, with Google Maps, as we find in Polestar and in Volvo and other cars which do run Android OS. Here, Audi have chosen to just do an updated version of their own navigation system, but again, I can't comment if that's a good thing or a bad thing before I've actually tested it out. But what we can do is that we can go into the map settings here, and then you can see it is really nice, it is really new, and it does have updated functionality, it is quick. So let's just do something fun here. If we wanna to go to Oslo, we are currently in Munich here, and it's all offline, but maybe it won't let us. So Oslo Town Center, what does this interface look like? I don't know, we don't have any you know, internet connectivity now. It does said it's offline. Um, they've probably done that intentionally, so I don't think, oh, it actually. Contains ferry connections. Okay. So this is new. If you come closer here, this it shows you know that we will arrive with zero percent. It should put in routes here. It should put in charting stations. But again, we don't have online services now, so I think we're just going to cancel that. But that is just a sneak preview. Also here we do have different views, and uh, let's see if we can close that. Yes, we have different views here in the screen. And it is crystal clear. It looks really, really nice. Uh, oh, there we can change the different screens. Again, we only have a very limited time here to check out the functionality, but it looks really nice and crisp. I'm a huge fan of, you know, Audi not going the route as other cars where they just put a tablet in the center. They said in the presentation intentionally, they tried to make this, you know, this horizontal line, which goes across the interior and across the dashboard where we know how the screens in, in, in width instead of having you know something here uh, which is vertical just plastered to the dashboard but that is something we are absolutely going to get to take a deeper dive into once I get one of these cars as a press car on Norwegian soil later this year but I'm really impressed with the material quality I think it is really nice, though there are a few things. If you look at the door over there, you can look at around there by the door handle. It does have some cheap touch plastics around there and also the grab handle. But other than that, the interior, especially this fabric here is really nice. On top here, you have some artificial leather. There are several layers here, though here we do have hard touch plastics, but it's not too bad and that is to be expected. So front cabin, really roomy, really nice visibility. Let's hop into the back and check out the rear seat room. Okay, rear seats of the Audi Q6 e-tron and it's not as roomy as I was hoping. I'm sat behind myself now. I'm five foot 10, 178 centimeters. So an average adult in the Western hemisphere. And it's not, you know, there's not a little room. There's, there's plenty of room, but I was just hoping for a little bit more airy cabin. Though I can, can't put my feet under the, the front seat. So that is really, really nice. And also the bench is at a really nice height. So I do have nice under thigh support. And also the seat back headroom. Everything is, is just really good. Quality back here, like in the front, soft touch plastics on top of the door. I'm really a huge fan of this fabric here. 
I'm, I love leather. Like you can get this with a fine Napa leather interior, but I think if I were to option this, this would be a really nice option for the interior. I'm just a huge fan of this fabric. It just looks really cool and of high quality. So let's hop into the middle. Since this is a dedicated electric car platform from, from the get go, it does have a almost flat floor, but there isn't room to put your feet here. As you guys can see here, I'm struggling to get my foot around there. So that's a little bit disappointing, but the cabin is wide enough and I can sit in the middle here. It's not the most comfortable seat, but I do have a lot of headroom. Okay, so let's take a look at the front and there's no uh, sign that shows you have to pull it twice. So the big question is, will this unlatch by just pulling it up or do we have to do another maneuver? We've seen this in a lot of cars I've seen lately where you just pull it up. So one, two, three. No. Why Audi? Why? So then there should be some latch down here somewhere. There we go. There's a latch. But when we open it up, it's actually pretty big. This is 61 liters or 67 if I'm not mistaken. It is actually pretty deep. This is really nice and it looks like to be weather weather proofed also. So there's not going to be dust and, and water ingressing in here. You do have room for a cable and also a gym bag. So that is really, really nice. You have your 12 volt battery under there and probably have other utilities under there. So that means you have to close it and then you have to latch it like that and then push it down. So let's take a look at the trunk. This curiously enough has a trunk which is 500 and 26 liters, electrically operated tailgate, 621 liters, is only six liters bigger than what we find in the Q4 e-tron. It does have, you know, storage underneath here. This has the Bang & Olufsen stereo with a subwoofer, but it's curious that this trunk is only marginally bigger than what we find in that Audi Q4 e-tron. So it's smaller than what we find in the Volkswagen ID4. It's smaller than what we find in the Skoda Enyaq and a lot smaller than what we find in the bigger brother, the Audi Q8 e-tron. Okay, so there we go, guys. That was my full tour of the interior and the exterior and also a very short test drive of this, the brand new Audi Q6 e-tron. The car I test drove was actually an SQ6 e-tron which is similar to this car on the exterior and on the interior, it just has a lot more power. But guys, let me know what you think down below. Are you excited about this new Audi Q6 e-tron Quattro or SQ6 e-tron? I think it is one of the nicest looking, most exciting cars out of Ingolstadt in a while. And talking about Ingolstadt, this is fully assembled, battery pack, car and everything in Ingolstadt as their first electric car built at the Audi factory in their hometown. Pretty cool, they've, as I said, they've had two days of full presentation, technical and everything, and condensing all of that into just half an hour of video is literally impossible. So there are probably things I have missed in this video, but I tried to talk about the things I remember it and I think that I, that I think was relevant. But guys, we're gonna get to see this car again later on in the air, so be, remember to subscribe, be, remember to like the video. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button down below and for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later, goodbye.